There's a list of infamous instrument approaches, and this one shows up at the top of most of them. The VOR into runway 15 at Martin State in Baltimore. At first glance, it doesn't look so bad. Sure, there's a DME arc, but lots of approaches have DME arcs. This one, though, incorporates the arc all the way into the final approach segment. Typically, a DME arc is used to transition an aircraft onto the approach course, not serve as the actual approach course. Also, the missed approach is going to really tax our VOR skills. But before we get into that, let's jump off on a brief IFR flight out of Carroll County in Maryland. And just for added fun, we're going to turn off the simulator's geo reference so we're only flying off the VORs. Our route takes us to the Westminster VOR 117.9, which will get set up on Nav 1. And from there, we'll fly outbound along a radial to Sloaf, which is the initial approach fix for the approach and where the DME arc commences. We'll want to ident the station and all other VOR stations we use. We're also going to set our GPS displays to show nearest VOR, and we can use the distance readout in lieu of DME. We're currently 7.3 miles from the Westminster VOR, EMI. The course to fly inbound to the VOR will be about 175, not too far off runway heading. We have Potomac Approach set up on standby COM1, and we'll put the ATIS from Martin State on COM2 active. So we get our release from Potomac Clearance, and we'll depart. We maintain runway heading through 400 AGL and then can proceed direct to the VOR. We switch over to Potomac who tells us to climb and maintain 2600 and to expect the VOR approach into runway 15. Leveling off at 2600, we'll continue to fly inbound to the station. When the flag flips, we'll be turning outbound to join Victor 268, the 151 radial, which will take us to Slofe. We've been told to expect the approach so we can pull up the plate. We'll be using the Baltimore VOR extensively on this approach, so that can go into NAV 1 standby 115.1. Let's also put it on NAV 2 active. We get handed off to Potomac Approach on 119.7, the final controller for Baltimore. Checking in with them, they tell us to cross slow for 2600 cleared for the VOR 15 approach Martin State. We'll put Martin Tower on COM 1 standby 121.3, and ground can go on COM2 standby, 121.8. On the missed approach, we'll want to use the Andrews VOR ADW to identify the holding fix. That's on 113.1. We'll put that on NAV2 standby for now. Okay, let's brief. This is the VOR approach to runway 15 at Martin. The Baltimore VOR is set on both NAV1 and NAV2. We're currently flying inbound to Slofe, which we'll identify as 14.7 DME from Baltimore along the radial we're currently flying on NAV 1. We're also navigating the same radial on NAV 2, as that's set to fly inbound along the 334 radial to Baltimore. We have tower and ground on standby. When we get to Slofe, we'll arc to the east. We'll make about a 90 degree turn to 060 degrees to begin the arc. When we cross the 021 radial from Baltimore, we'll be at Cumby and can then descend to 1800. When we cross the 039 arc, we'll be at Goves, the final approach fix, and can descend to 1260, which takes us to Zovap on the 047 radial. After that, we can descend to the MDA just above 920 and look for the runway. The missed approach point is on the 060 radial, the runway threshold. We'll go missed by making a right climbing turn to 2500. We intercept the 068 radial inbound to Baltimore. A good intercept heading should be about 210. We may want to write that down because it's not on the approach plate. And we'll want to turn to it right away after going missed. Along the 068 radial, we fly inbound to 11 DME, then commence another arc to the south. On the 108 radial, which is crossed by the 055 radial from Andrews, we arrive at the holding fix, roast, do a teardrop entry, and hold. The runway is nice and long for our Cessna. None of the notes apply, and the minimum safe altitude is 2,600 feet. The risk on this approach is its difficulty. Our attention will be diverted between multiple VOR heads, constant OBS changes on both of the two arcs, and the change in navigation transitioning from the final approach to the mist. We'll be in a turn on the arc all the way to short final for the runway. Okay, we're about at 15.5 DME from Baltimore, about half a mile from Slope now so we'll start a left turn to 065 to join the arc. We're going to turn the OBS on nav 1 to 340, the next radial along the arc. We're slowly working our way to the 021 radial at Cumbie, 
so we're using the turn 10 twist 10 technique. Initially, we're a bit more than 14.7 DME from Baltimore, so we need to turn inside a bit. This will be a correction towards the station to the right. With Andrews active on Nav 2, we'll set the radial we need for the missed approach, 055. We're focused on staying 14.7 away from Baltimore at all times on the arc. If we get too close, we need to correct left and vice versa. But each time the needle comes center on Nav 1, we turn 10 right and twist another 10. We're working our way towards Cumbie, our first step down fix. When we cross the 010 radial, we can twist the OBS to 021 which is the radial Cumbie lies on. Crossing that radial, we can continue in the arc and descend to 1800 feet. This is where we'll leave off for this video. The next video will show us continue along the arc through Cumbie all the way down to the runway and then show our missed approach and hold. It's been exciting so far, so be on the lookout for part two of this flight and check out Flight Insight Ground Schools today. We go from private pilot all the way up through CFI.